W. Mark Watts, author of the report, The Divorce Hangover Cure. And in this video, I'm going to share with you five post-divorce success strategies for parents. Let's go ahead and get started. Number one is, I want you to be honest with your children about what's going on uh, with the divorce in the family. Now, what, what do I mean by that? I don't mean that you should tell them every gory deed and intimate detail about what created the divorce in the family. No, I do not mean that. What I do mean though is to be honest or politically honest uh, with the kids or the child about the fact that there is going to be a divorce in the family, that the parents are going to split. But what I want you to focus on is how important the kid or the child, the children are to both parents and that they will continue to be loved just as they have been in the past and that they will remain a top priority and remain very important to you going forward because at the very bottom of all that's going on that child wants to know and wants to be assured that they are still important that they won't be left out and that everything will be fine for them you must reassure them so put the emphasis on that but be honest about the fact that the family's splitting because the more you hide these details, the more opportunity you give for things to be misunderstood and for things to turn out worse than they have to be. Now, I also want you, is once you start this conversation, I want you to continue to engage your children in what's going on. Listen to them, ask them questions because oftentimes, Things that you, decisions that you may have to make that you think are really tough or you're not sure which way to go, if you just involve the kids in, in that decision making process, you will realize that things can be a lot easier than you think. Because after all, they're only, they're really little people. And I'm going to give you an example of how this worked out in my life when uh, my former spouse and I decided to get a divorce. And I haven't shared this with very many people at all. Only my close friends are aware of the story. But what happened was when we finally decided that we were going to go our separate ways, uh, we uh, decided that we needed to tell BJ, or my son, whose name is BJ, right away. So we called him up into the room, and he st as he stands in front of us, we're sitting on the couch, uh, I'm doing the talking, and I explained to him very calmly and clearly that his mom and I are going to split. But then I go into the details about how important he is and how we will both love him and that will never change. And uh, just as I'm wrapping up and I'm asking him if he has any questions or concerns, he you know, kind of calmly looks at me and says, no, he's four years old at the time. And he asks, can he leave? So uh, I, we look at him and we say, well, if you don't have any questions, yeah, you can, you can leave. And he starts to walk away and then he turns back and he looks at me and he says, dad, are you gonna get remarried? And I was kind of caught off guard, and uh, his mom and I looked at each other and kind of in awe. And, and of course, at this time, I never even, that's the farthest thought from my mind, but I had to give him, a, again, an honest answer. And I told him, I said, BJ, I don't know. I said, I'm not sure what I'm going to do uh, after this point. I said, all we know right now is, is where we are. We've told you everything. I've told you everything that I know right now. And he looked at me, and he said, okay. And he walked out of the room and went to his room and started playing. And it was at that very moment that I understood with so much clarity that I had an opportunity there. I could have tried to lie to him or mislead him, but I was honest with him. He accepted that answer. And to this day, we still have an extremely honest relationship. And it's worked really well with us between he and I, between his mom and him. And he's never left out of any major decisions. We keep him a part of what's going on. And I think that time that we chose to be honest with him is a huge reason why we all share the relationship that we still share to this day. Now, number two, is I want you to forgive yourself. Because oftentimes when a divorce occurs, you feel like you, sh you shoulder so much blame. And what you have to realize is that you're human. Life changes. Things happen. Think back to other times in your life when things didn't turn out the way you wanted them to. 
yeah, this is a little bit different because it's a marriage and you don't go into the marriage thinking, oh, I'm going to get a divorce one day or else you should never have gotten married in the first place. But you have to, at the core, at the root of what you have to start to think about as you sift through the very, the many details that you have to sift through when, when this happens is you have to understand that you are still the wonderful superstar that you were when you got married. Don't ever forget that. This is only a transition in what is a still a wonderful life for you. So look at it as such and take away any of the guilt that you have for your part, your participation in, the, in this dissolution of your marriage. Now, number three is I want you to give yourself the opportunity to grieve. You have to allow yourself to grieve. Many people equate a divorce to a death, like a death in the family. And for many people, it feels that way because if you think about it, it is the death of a relationship that you're heavily invested in. You've put a lot of time and effort and you had hopes and dreams wrapped around uh, what you thought would be your partner for life. And now that that's changed, it, it, it can be a very, uh, a very tough time for you to deal with. So when it happens, when you feel sad, when you feel angry, when you're mad at whatever, for whatever reason, take the time to feel those feelings. Allow them to come out. Uh, I suggest that you talk to someone you believe that, that you're really close to, that you can trust, that you can be really honest with, and allow those feelings to come out. Because what is going on is that is part of the healing process that will allow you to start to move forward in your life. If you keep that bottled up inside of you, it's always going to be down and it's going to eat at you and it's going to hinder your progress moving forward. Number four, forgive your former, your former spouse because it is it will only hold you back if you only look at that person and remember what happened most recently in the relationship and why it, the actual divorce occurred. You also have to realize that your former spouse is human. They were doing the best that they could at that given time. And yes, I know, sometimes it doesn't feel that way. Sometimes you wish they had made better choices. Sometimes you wish you had made different choices. Sometimes you wish you could have worked it out. But the bottom line is that now you are divorced, you have to forgive that person just as much as you forgive yourself because we're all human and we have to realize that life goes on and you cannot continue to, uh, to look at that person at, as anything less than the wonderful human being that they really are. Lastly, I want you to uh, stay away from the blame game. There are many reasons why divorces occur. Uh, you could point the finger at them, they could point the finger at you, you could point the finger at other people, but the, at the end of the day, does that really matter? If you're continuing to blame someone, it just holds in that, that attachment that you have to that person. And believe me, you, it will be very difficult for you to move forward in your life as long as you're pointing the finger and continuing to blame someone about a relationship that has dissolved and that both parties need to move on and grow and learn from. So please, please stay away from the blame game. It doesn't help anybody. Uh, the past is the past. You're in the present and you want to build toward a better future. Now, let me just do a quick recap for you. Number one is I want you to be honest with your children. Number two, forgive yourself. Number three, allow yourself the opportunity to grieve. Number four, forgive your former spouse. And lastly, do not become a part of the blame game. Again, it's, I'm W. Mark Watts. I'm author of the report, The Divorce Hangover Cure. And it's been such a pleasure to share in these success strategies with you. And I hope that they helped and served you. And I look forward to speaking with you again in the future. Take care.